President Buhari addresses troops on the front lines. HAPS on mission to end insecurity, restore peace, and an economic stability. Nigerians await actualities as Senate passed the 2022 budget. Also on political update today, grading the gavel, a review of Senate and House of Representatives in 2021. Join us for these and more. I am Fisayo Gunfui. Compliments of the season and welcome. Troops of Operation Hadinkai the, in, in the Northeast uh, Theater of Operations have been tasked to remain focused and steadfast as they go into the final phase of the campaign against terrorism and other acts of criminality undermining national security and stability. President Muhammadu Buhari addressed the troops at the Meduguri International Airport and insists that the nation's strategic and goal of defeating all adversaries must be achieved and economic viability restored in the Northeast. I am here on behalf of a grateful nation to thank and commend you for your service and sacrifices. Without doubt, in the last six years, the sad reality inherited in the security situation here is tempered by the progress made in the fight against terrorism and insurgency. The recent mass surrender of terrorists to the armed forces, the resettlement of 18 towns by the Borno State government since 2019, as well as increased access to farmlands and businesses in places like Banki and other key areas are evidence of the significant strides achieved in the middle of the devastation. You have displayed extraordinary resilience and steadfastness in the face of adversity. That is the spirit, tenacity, and resolve that the Nigerian Armed Forces is known for. As you are Commander-in-Chief, I am mindful of your selfless sacrifices, which in some cases have entailed fame the supreme prize. The nation owes you a debt of gratitude for your commitment, dedication, and unalloyed loyalty to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari said although the country is still faced with several security challenges largely characterized by violent activities of non-state actors, public confidence will continue to rise with further optimization in the gains for national security. I am aware that you have started receiving some of the platforms procured by our administration while you would be receiving some in the weeks ahead. Similar attention is being given to intelligence surveillance, target acquisition, and reconnaissance assets to project force across the theater and bring the fight to a logical and successful end. And as efforts by the military are continuously stepped up, the president said his administration will continue to work with all well-meaning stakeholders, including friendly nations, civil society organizations, as well as other credible non-governmental organizations to bring peace to all troubled areas across the nation. I particularly command His Excellency Babagana Umar Zulum for his entire commitment and cherished collaboration with the administration for the overall good of the people of Borno. Yours is a good example of the inherent benefits that are accruable from conscious positive interaction between the federal and government of the state. For the armed forces of Nigeria, unalloyed loyalty and commitment to the nation remain their watchwords.
Senators passed the 2022 budget of 17.1 trillion naira, an increment from the 16.3 presented by the executive. The oil benchmark was increased from 57 US dollars to 62 US dollars. The report. Month of October 2021, President Muhammadu Buhari presented the 2022 budget of economic recovery and sustainability to the National Assembly. Six weeks after, both chambers have passed the budget. Senate will convene from Wednesday's plenary into a closed door session, which lasted one hour. And it was time for business of the day. Chairman, Senate Committee on Appropriations, Jibrin Barao, presented the committee's report on the 2022 budget and provided explanations for the increase in deficit. The deficit was increased by 98 billion to include some other requests made by the city arm of government to take care of some projects of national importance which were not provided in the submitted project estimate and could not be covered by the increase in revenue. Today, by the grace of God, we have passed the budget for 2022. And that is a huge, very big milestone, very historic. And this is something that we are supposed to ensure that as long as we are in this Senate, up to our tenure, that we pass the budget as regularly as we have established. Out of the 17.1 trillion Naira 2022 budget, 5.4 trillion is for capital expenditure. Recurrent expenditure is 6.9 trillion. Statutory transfers, 869.6 billion. Debt service, 3.8 trillion. There was an increase in oil price benchmark from 57 United States dollars to 62. Oil production of 1.88 million barrels per day. Exchange rate of 110 naira 15 kobo to a dollar. Gross domestic product of 4.2% and inflation rate of 13%. Federal Minister of Works and Housing has the highest capital allocation of 470.1 billion naira, agriculture and rural development, 285.3 billion, defense, 204.6 billion, education, 159.6, health, 130 billion, transport, 93.6 billion, and Minister of Information and Culture, 23.6 billion. I want to assure all Nigerians that we are here as an assembly because we have been elected to serve as members of the assembly, parliamentarians. Everything and anything we do, we try to put Nigerians in the center of it. Senate also approved President Muhammadu Buhari's request for environment of 276.7 billion naira for funding critical infrastructure in the 2021 budget. The President of the Senate, in his closing remarks, explained that conclusion of works on the Constitutional Amendment Bill will be paramount in 2022. Well, this is the last plenary session as Senate has adjourned plenary to Tuesday, the 18th of January 2022, for the Christmas and New Year holidays. Thank you. That was Ignatius Unquo actually doing that on Wednesday. Meanwhile, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has said that uh, the Senate will address issues raised on the electoral bill uh, by the President uh, when both chambers uh, reconvene in January 2022, which is next month. We address the situation in whatever way is appropriate. I believe that this National Assembly, and particularly the Senate, has done so much recalled that uh, uh, the president uh, cited high cost of uh, conducting direct primaries, uh, security challenge of monitoring the elections, violation of citizens' rights, and marginalization of, uh, uh, you know, what we call smaller political parties as reasons for the declined uh, assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Moving on now, uh, no doubt 2021 has been another challenging year in the global community. Uh, for the House of Representatives, our correspondent reports that it was a mixed bag of successes and some down moments as well. Done and dusted is the term as the House of Representatives again passed the 2022 budget in record time. This closes the chapter of activities in the Green Chamber for the year. Other landmark legislations in 2021 include passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill, now an act of the National Assembly, 
breaking the jinx of close to two decades. It was passed same day with the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, consideration of which became dramatic as some members of the minority staged a walkout in protest over the clause allowing INEC to decide mode of transmission of election results. We have a legislative agenda in this ninth House of Representatives, which we tagged our contract with Nigerians. We will do everything within our power to keep the commitments we made in that document, so that when we appear before our various constituencies, we can stand tall in the knowledge that despite challenges and difficulties, we did what we pro promised to do, and given a chance again, we will do even more. Like other assemblies, the Ninth House has the Constitution Amendment Bill in the works. Public hearing was held across the six geopolitical zones to collate stakeholder opinion. What remains to be seen is whether some proposals like immunity for presiding officers of the National Assembly, autonomy for local government areas, among others, will scale true. All bills related to constitutional amendment must be passed by two-third uh, majority. Uh, only 52 of such bills have passed second reading. The executive legislature relationship remains vibrant, enabling speedy passage of executive bills like the annual budget to sustain the January to December cycle and the 2021 supplementary budget, making 2021 the year in which two budgets were passed. In the past, you, ha you have a situation whereby a budget is only passed midway, mid in the middle of the year. And it only com the commencement of its implementation commences almost in December and going through the next year. These things are now history. We will continue also to work with Mr. President and the executive arm of government in harmony because it's only when you are united that you can be able to deliver. The challenges of insecurity prompted the convening of a national security summit, recommendations of which were forwarded to the federal government for implementation. Other interventions were the engagement initiated by the leadership of the House to prevent industrial action by members of the Association of Resident Doctors and the Academic Staff Union of Universities. 2021 will also go down as one in which the Green Chamber faced record number of deaths. Five seven members died within the period under review. Joining us now is Honorable Abubakar Hassan Nalaraba, representing uh, Awe Domakena, federal constituency of Natural State. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And compliments of the season. Thank you. Um, you saw that report by my colleague Gala Ali looking at the activities uh, of the Green Chamber in the outgoing year. How would you score your? Uh, you and your colleagues this year in terms of responding uh, to the exigencies of national life? Um, thank you very much for having me. I think um, the ninth National Assembly 2021 have done tremendously well in the areas of uh, lawmaking and passage of bills that have direct impact to the bearings of Nigerians. If you can remember some, <clears throat> some two years ago, the world is being hit by a global pandemic. And I could remember vividly um, the Speaker of the House of Rep, uh, Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Miller, in his own wisdom, um, quickly drafted a bill, the Infectious Disease Bill, that will help to litigate the effect of uh, COVID-19 in Nigeria. And then that process we have been in for the past two years. In 2021, um, the National Assembly or the House of Reps made some, uh, uh, some successes in terms of lawmaking that have uh, been one. They've uh, reversed the budget cycle from January to December, which has been in place and has been a very successful uh, aspect of human life. You know very well that uh, for the past uh, two, three assemblies, the seven and eight assemblies, budget has been passed in the media and the implementation becomes very hectic. So um, 2020, 2021, we have a smooth budget passage. Secondly, there's also this issue of a supplementary budget that specifically the president brought a supplementary budget that was passed by the both houses and it delved in the issue of health and security, which Nigerians and the world have been um, battling with these serious health challenges and, and also security challenges. So these are 
some of the measures being taken by the ninth assembly in 2021. Okay, let's come to your constituency. You know, perhaps what, that was not what you expected. This whole pandemic and all that came as a root shock, yeah. uh, even to legislative activities. Have you been able to reconnect? Have you been able to, to a reasonable extent, touch lives there and perhaps uh, also come to help them? Also, you know, uh, give a picture of what your own, uh, you know, constituency is going through in that in on the floor to, to give uh, you know proper representation, as this is actually what uh, you're meant to do on the floor. Yes, um, um, in my coming to my constituency, uh, it's um, it's it's well known. Uh, during the pandemic, we were able to we were able to give some kind of palliatives to our constituents during the lockdown. You know, during the lockdown, people were unable to go about their normal businesses. People were not going to farms anymore because there, there's restrictions on movement. So we're able to to give them some palliatives in terms of food items. Like uh, we distributed about uh, 2,500 bags of rice to my constituents with uh, over 1,500 two bags of yam. And then we also support some little, uh, we also support uh, market women with 50,000 Naira, over 1,500 market women with over 50,000 Naira to start a business after the lockdown. This, we believe, is going to alleviate the suffering and mitigate some of the hardship going on in, 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 in the country that was, in fact, that was affected by the, by the pandemic. And then look at uh, our various interventions in terms of school uh, uh, scholarship, in terms of um, empowerment to youths, in terms of training. Because most of these youths, they don't know what, how to convert 10 Naira or 20 Naira to become 100 Naira. So we engage them in training, training, and training. Has so it been yielding these dividends? It has been yielding dividends tremendously. And, and we, 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 we even have a kind of a report from a woman that uh, we gave her 50,000 Naira after a year. She confessed, I have the videos. She now sent the videos to me that she had now had over 350,000 Naira at her post. Do you understand? So, I mean, it's something that is quite commendable. When you give 50,000 and, and a woman confessed that she went into business, she I'll, bought. I'll, a, I'll check my first whether I'm bet, from your consultant. She, bet, she, 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 she bought I, some I, bags of rice. She bought some bags of rice, about four bags of rice. She sold it when the rice went up in price. And then she now went and reinvested in buying shoes and clothes for, 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 for kids. She now made some profit again. She now went and reinvested in buying wrappers for women. In fact, she was praying for me. And there are so many lot of, um, what do you call it, interventions that yield enormous results in my constituency. I, 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 like I said, I will still check my first to see whether I'm from your constituency. But let's uh, so move, from my let, constituency, let's, I will I, 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 let, let's, let's uh, move quickly because Thank of you. time. But uh, I need to ask you uh, this because you will test your popularity soon again. Yes. And uh, INEC is right there at the end of the curve waiting again. And of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, new things have been uh, you know, introduced into our electoral system uh, in terms of technology. We have the uh, BVAS, Biomodal Voters Registration uh, System. Um, in what you have seen, especially in the elections this year, the off-cycle uh, elections, Anambra and the uh, one in uh, the state election, the state assembly election in uh, Delta State, are you comfortable with, uh, you know, the introduction of this uh, new technology in spite of the fact that, you know, some of them do not particularly work, work uh, optimally? Um, with what's happened in the recent election in 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 in, in Alhambra, we can say yes, it's, it's it's fair because we need to give kudos to INEC for 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 doing justice to to the election, and I believe there's still room for improvement, which um, the electoral act currently at the National Assembly tends to address, and the National Assembly is always ready to collaborate with INEC and to assist INEC in terms of funding that will make their jobs more easier and, and, and more perfect during the, the, the elections. And you may recall that uh, INEC presented a budget of almost a billion naira to conduct the election, which um, some Nigerians look at it as too huge. But looking at what the activity is going on during the election, even the 100 billion is underfunded. It cannot go anywhere when it comes to election and ensuring that smooth, free, and fair election is, 
is conducted across the country. So the National Assembly is ever ready and we are willing to make some kind of uh, increment or injections into INEC funds so that uh, they will have enough to conduct free and credible elections. We welcome what kind of technological advancement that they will use in conducting elections. But there are challenges in such kind of technological uh, 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 innovations. Like in my constituency, I have a place called uh, Abashi, I have a place called Apanaja, these are electoral wards that bring out a lot of votes. But there are no, no communication service in such areas. How do you transmit results from Agbashi to Doma, then to Lafia, the main capital? You understand? These are the challenges that we are trying to uh, talk to INIC to look into it to see how they can, they can, they can, uh, how they can come about to check those challenges and solve these issues. There are areas in Nigeria where there are no network. How can you transmit results in such areas where there are no networks? Into all, all right, I understand that there are some inputs, even some inputs about uh, the inputs of. NCC and all that certainly, uh, in certainly. the whole process. Before I let you go, all lawmakers, at least in our political setting, are politicians first. In your uh, party, there's a date with destiny in February. We don't know the day itself, but it seems as if masquerades have started coming out. Uh, uh, that will determine a lot of things in 2021. How is everybody reshaping and how is camp? Uh, you know, um, I'm a politician and I'm of the APC, All Progressive Congress. And also, we are very much aware that uh, the APC Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Committee has slated February for, for the convention. And we are all ready, like you said. The masquerades are out. And the big masquerades and the bigger masquerades are all out. But we hope that um, the, the winner at the end of the day emerges. But, I will, uh, but however, I would like to use this opportunity to, to, to talk to Nigerians, to look at the credibility and the potentials of all the candidates. We are looking at who can sustain the gains of the party. We will look at also who is ready and willing for the job. We we'll also look at the antecedents and also the pedigree of the various uh, aspirants going for elections. And most importantly, most importantly, the personalities of the individuals that are going for the election matters a lot. Because if you have an antecedent of uh, destroying one political party and then you jump to another political party, that is not what we need in APC. If you have an antecedent of causing havoc in your instead that you cannot manage your own state, that is not what the party needs. The party needs someone that can stabilize the party, someone that can unify the party, and someone that can sustain the gains of the founding fathers of the party. And I believe that masquerade is already on ground. I, I would not let you use the program to campaign. But what I would let you do is uh, in, two, in 2023, uh, Nigerians go to the poll again. Of course, there are two uh, elections uh, coming before then in 2022. Um, a lot of Nigerians are saying a lot of money going to Nigerian, uh, you know, uh, uh, elections and all that before then, pre-election and all that. What will be your word to politicians at this time? Are we maturing? Should we play down on some of these rhetorics and, of course, this use of uh, all latter use of money, especially as we move into this, uh, you know, election cycles? You see, the truth is you, you, can, you cannot separate politics with money. You can't separate elections with money. Like I just said, you need about over a billion naira to conduct elections. So also the politicians and the electors, they need money to converse for votes. They need money to converse for, for, for to go for campaigning and election. So you cannot separate money with election. In fact, the norms, the general norms, let me be candid to you, the general norms, when it goes to the field, if you don't have money to give your electorates during elections or during campaigns, nobody will come out and vote for you. Whatever projects you, you, you tend to, to execute, the same electorates will tell you that so are we mature, they are hungry. Are we maturing politically then, if we can't look at even the, the values that you have uh, you know, stated in our last question, no. and we are just waiting for 4,000 for four years, for 4,000 naira for the next We are years. not giving electorates for 4,000 for four years, like uh, point of correction, we are not giving them for 4,000 for four years, but I'm telling you, the process itself is fund demanding. The process you have to spend money in the process and then we are getting there inshallah gradually you know like i said nigerian is a developing country so we are developing we are developing 
from um, elections of monetary elections to elections of issue-based elections. So and, con I think and conscience. And conscience. All right, yeah. we've had Arobu uh, Naraba, Abubakar uh, Asa Naraba of uh, Awe Doma, Kena Federal Constituency of Narasarawa State, very uh, engaging uh, in our topic today, and we hope that you will still avail of, of your time uh, in the coming year. We should do very best uh, in you your constituency much. as well. That was political much. update today. Uh, you know, next week we'll be rounding up for, for the year and we'll be doing our review as usual. Stick on with uh, the Nigerian Television Authority, where we give you the very best of news, reviews, previews, and interviews, and always play your politics for the greater good. Bye-bye now.